now, whether you're looking for your first home or a lucrative development, the auction may have some bit for you. Isn't that right, my little flower? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, in these challenging times, there are still bargains to be had, just as long as you avoid the pitfalls. Join us now as we show you the ropes. Well, a wave of a catalogue, a nod of the head, or just a sly wink. It doesn't matter how you bid, as long as you get the auctioneer's attention. Well, today we'll meet some people who did just that. But which three properties caught their eye? Let's find out. I find a mid-terrace in the suburbs of Sunderland that leaves me lost for words. <laughs> wow! In Streatham, London, I'm at a mansion block flat with expensive taste. The service charge is a staggering £3,000 a year. And in Somerset, there's a very pricey cottage with some very noisy neighbours. £195,000 for that? You've got to be kidding! All these properties have been sold at auction, and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. So. Sunderland in Tyne and Weir is steeped in a rich heritage of coal and shipbuilding. But more recently, a lot of new development and the university have resulted in the place going student mad. Well, the property I'm here to see is just five minutes walk from the university in an area known as Eden Vale, also called, not surprisingly, Studentville. This is it. It's a four-bedroomed house, had a guide price of £80,000 plus. I'm going to be giving it a thorough examination. Will it come out as an A grade or bottom of the class? Let's find out. Within walking distance of the university, Eden Vale has a great variety of properties, ranging from small terraces to 21st century new builds to rather large houses like this one. Wow! Just look at this! I, I don't know, from the outside I just didn't expect this kind of amazing entrance. You've got this little porch area here, you've got the original glass. Wow! And then this archway leading into this beautiful, big, welcoming central well, hallway area, I suppose. Stairway that you can imagine women in long frocks drifting their way down. Um, yeah, am I going over the top here? <laughs> I like it, even though <laughs> you can't tell. Um, big front room there with a the bay window. Yeah. Look at the ceiling. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> rear room, same thing with the ceiling. This strikes me as a house that's just waiting to be sorted out. <laughs> Well, the grandeur didn't stop with the front room. The second reception room is also not short on style or space. What a wonderful start to a property. <laughs> what are we going to find back here? Well, a very big kitchen. Now, when you get into this part of the house, you suddenly think, mm, well, yeah, there's work to be done. I mean, the ceiling's got a hole in it, probably from a leak in the bath up, up there or something like that. I it's, it's a bit icky, isn't it? It needs completely stripping out. But you've got a lot of light coming in from the two sash windows. You've got a lot of space. So for a communal area, if you're thinking about renting this out, maybe to students, then uh, a great place to have. Continuing back, a bit of a kind of utility room. But what you're just getting with this house straight away is so much space. <laughs> This house goes on forever. Off the utility area, there's a shower room. Outside, there might not be much of a back garden, but it does have a parking space. Back inside to have a look at the first floor. Well, upstairs, 
and that feeling of space just continues. I mean, in, in some ways, it's almost like there's too many open areas. I mean, look at this landing you've, and this area here. It, it gives this openness, maybe not the most efficient use of space. It pains me to say it, but maybe you want to try and rejig the layout a little bit. But what have we got here at the moment? We've got a bedroom there, we've got a bathroom, then up these stairs onto another landing where you've got three more bedrooms. So. What could this place be other than an absolutely majestic family home? Well, let's just put the pieces together. We're close to the university. We've got big rooms that could be let out individually. It is a student-led, without a doubt. Work to be done to get into that uh, condition, but you've got the makings of a fantastic opportunity here. We invited a local estate agent to see what he thinks about the £80,000 guide price for this massive property. I think that probably the moment it would appeal to an investor in its current state, uh, given the fact you know it's seen far, far better days. Having said that, it would be very nice for a family to move into and convert it back into a lovely family residence that it was that it once was, maybe a hundred years ago. There's enough flexibility in the house for any investor really to make the most of the house and get easily four or five bedrooms out of it. So if it was refurbished as a family home, what does he think it might be worth? If the property was converted straight back into a family residence, you could easily get £165,000, £170,000. Since this is student land, if someone converted the house for student accommodation, what would that do to its value? If the property was sold as a fully let student property, we're looking at at least £200,000. Well, clearly lots of work to be done to sort this place out, but it ticks every single box you could possibly want for a student let. And student lets equal loads of potential money. Great opportunity. Let's see who caught it when it went under the hammer. Lot number 52, the vacant four-bedroom mid-through terrace house. This auction lot was late in the day, and although the crowds have gone, there was still keen interest in the property. Guide price at £80,000. £78,000 I'll take. Thank you. £78,000 is bid. £78,500 at the back. £79,500, sir. £80,500. £81,500. These and two half. battled it out with £500 bids, half. and we rejoined the auction at £90,000. I'll keep going at half. £90,500. £91,500. Ninety-two, no, ninety-three, ninety-four, ninety-five, ninety-six, and ninety-six thousand pounds. Ninety-seven. You can see you hovering. Yeah, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. No, he's definitely shaking his head. Could be also at ninety-eight thousand pounds. Ninety-nine thousand anywhere else? Selling then for the first time at ninety-eight thousand pounds. Second, third and final time at 98,000. David made the successful bid of 98,000. He runs a property development company, which is very much a family affair. I met up with David's dad, Dave, and business partner, Mark, to find out their plans for the place. David, Mark, lovely to meet you both. Hi, pleasure. Congratulations. Tell me why you wanted to buy this place. It's what we do. We buy properties, we renovate them, we let them, and then we sell them on as mainly as joint ventures with our uh, investors. OK, so why this particular house then? We have already bought a house in the street, in the same road, which we renovated last year, uh, which rented very, very quickly, and then it sold to one of our existing clients again very, very quickly. Want your money, money. The pair did pay £18,000 over the guide price, but with all their experience, they're confident this place can become a profitable earner. So talk me through the plan, then. What are you going to do to actually get this place up to scratch? Really, what we're, what we're looking to do is to bring stock like this back to life, so to speak, yep. to stop it being uh, what it is uh, at this point... Uh, at one point in, in history, Sunderland had a, had a grand past it, and these houses were built on that wealth. What we're trying to do is hopefully, um, you won't bring it back to the grandeur, but you'll bring it back to life and they'll be used and they'll be lived in and hopefully there'll be uh, uh, good memories for the students in the years to come. So in terms of maintaining the grandeur, and I mean, it certainly is grand for sure, is that something you're going to do? We try to keep the original features where we can. 
So you'll see the likes of the of the sealing work will remain. Some of the stuff will have to be affected simply because of regulation. We have uh, a team of contractors who we've worked with for a number of years now. They know exactly the spec. They know exactly what we want. So they will be in here tomorrow. They will rip out the existing kitchen, bathrooms, carpets. Windows are already double glazed, so they will more than likely stay. Then we will rewire, we'll replumb, new bathroom, new kitchen, uh, hardwired smoke alarms. Then it'll be recarpeted throughout uh, and furnished with brand new furniture. We don't use any second-hand uh, furniture. We don't cut any corners. So when you come back to see this, our contractors will be in and out within four weeks and it'll be a very handsome house when you come back to see it. They clearly have a passion for properties and are combining their preservation of the place with regenerating it for the student market. What will they do to transform it into a property for multiple occupancy? Now, in terms of the number of rooms, it's big enough to maybe knock some out and create more. Uh, are you going to keep it like it is or, or, or go for the maximum number of rooms possible? We never split the rooms. Um, so they, we leave the, the, the big Victorian rooms as they are. It's a great selling point that at £100 per room per week, you can have a purpose-built uh, room and uh, that will come with a certain size. Um, but for £80, £85 per room per week, um, you can effectively swing cats in these rooms. <laughs> so it's, uh, no, the size is, it, it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful feature and we, we wouldn't want to adjust that. So what about cost? What's the budget? In terms of budget, um, we've got 24500 plus VAT for the renovation. <laughs> That's a bit precise. Yeah, well, I mean, we... We, we do cost, this, so yeah. we know. Yeah, we do we've this all the time. It out. Um, that's all in, so that's furniture, um, that's all the redecoration, that's everything being done. Um, we know what we want to spend for the kitchen, we know the spec, uh, we, we, we know where we're going to buy it from, um, we know uh, the furniture packs, they're all lined up, so we've got a little logistical operation taking place. Any kind of funny. David and Mark have done their homework when it comes to the figures, but there is really a lot to do to this place. With their regular team on the job, the pair are confident it will go without a hitch. These two seem to have a solid working relationship as well. So tell me about you two then. How did you meet? How did you get together? Mark's family and our family have known each other for years, so the family connection goes back a very long way. Yeah. Our working relationship goes back three years, yeah. but the family connection goes back many years. Back to great granddads and all that sort oh, really? of stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. So you've obviously been doing this for a while. Do you still get excited about turning this kind of place around? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Love it. Um, but that's the, the, I, th I think you have to do what you love. Um, and uh, maybe I played with Lego too much when I was a kid, but uh, <laughs> no, we, we love the houses, we absolutely love it. Uh. It's, still, it's still good to be starstruck, it's still good to have a look at a house like this when you come in and come back a few weeks later, and we all do it, we still open the front door and go, wow, it's just a lovely feeling, so if you like property, this is, you know, this is the kind of thing to do. Well listen, congratulations, good luck with it, and I can't wait to see how it all turns out. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Mark and David clearly know exactly what they're doing and it's not surprising that they went for this place. But I am delighted that they're going to pretty much keep it as it is in terms of the layout. It would have been so easy to change what is an amazing place just for profit. Find out how they get on later in the show. I've travelled to Streatham in South London today where transport links and affordable property make this part of the capital very popular indeed. Bus routes galore and several train stations all keep this part of the capital connected. And just a short walk away is Streatham Hill where I find today's auction property. I'm here to see a two-bedroom purpose-built flat. It had a guide price of 135,000. Now, that represents extremely good value because a similar two-bed flat in this block is on the market for 215 grand. Built in 1933, a time when the three-piece suite proved popular, most homes had a plumbed-in kitchen and three out of four households had a radio. <laughs> but it's an attractive frontage and, you know, I can't wait to get inside and take a closer look. The flats were designed by Frank Harrington in the Dutch style with a mansard roof incorporating dormer windows. I'm just hoping the gutters aren't clogged up. There are tulips, but this garden does have some very impressive rose bushes too. They look fairly well established. In 
inside and the building is showing its age, but in a good way. The letterboxes, the newel posts, this place really has retained its 1930s charm. OK, now I'm not going to get too hung up on the fact that I've had to walk up two flights of stairs because I've never seen such wonderfully decorated communal parts. I can't say the same about this flat. It's in a bit of a state, but you have got lots of storage here. Good sized kitchen and a really lovely sized lounge. Now, the thing I like about this flat is that all the rooms are big, they're square. It's obvious you need a complete overhaul in here. Somebody needs to get in and strip the place back. But one nice thing, you have fantastic floorboards. Now look at these, they're in really good condition. So you probably need to get the whole flat carpeted, but you could get away with having lovely wooden floorboards here. And you've got these beautiful windows. Now my guess is that you can't change them because everything in this building has to look uniform. You can hear the traffic outside, but once they've been painted up, they will look lovely. I think this is a great flat. I love the outside, I love the interior. A big tick. I'm a fan of this flat. The bones are here and the configuration really works. Having said all that, looking around, it becomes clear that this flat does require a serious cash injection. The cracks in the bedroom do give me a bit of a sinking feeling. So what do you want to get out of your bathroom? You want to lay in a warm, soapy, bubbly bath, light some scented candles, luxuriate and relax. Funny, I don't think I could do any of those things in here. Oh, take what you do with the way that you do with. Yes, I usually paint the town red after enjoying a bath, but here it looks like someone decided against going out and stayed in to paint their bath blue. An odd choice, so this entire suite will have to go, I'm afraid. The second bedroom is larger than the first, and once all this clutter is gone, it will be a really good space. Again, you have single pane windows, but at least you look out onto the communal garden. And outside, well, there's not much of a grassy area, but you do have the benefit of this lovely communal garden, complete with pretty flowers and this wonderful old ornamental pond. And you know, I could sit out here for hours. How absolutely fabulous, darling. <laughs> Well, with such a little Eden tucked away, you get the best of both worlds with this flat. Peace and quiet and access to great transport. I like this flat. It's got an attractive frontage, glorious communal gardens, but it does come at a price, I'm afraid. The service charge is a staggering £3,000 a year. Now, this does include all hot water bills and central heating charges, but still, that is quite a substantial amount to pay annually. If you fail to read the legal pack, it could come as quite a shock. But is this flat value for money at its guide price of 135,000? We asked a local estate agent for his opinion. It needs um, some TLC, it needs modernizing and just a total makeover. I think this flat has a lot of potential. Excellent for a first-time buyer or an investor, um, and I would love to see it once it's been modernised. Once it's all completed and beautified, what would the rental and resale values of this flat be? Once this flat is modernised, this flat could be put on the rental market for approximately £1,100 per month. Once refurbished, I would say the maximum this would, I, I could put this on the market for would be £210,000. £3,000 service charge will put some buyers off, but I think the lovely period features, this fabulous communal garden and convenient location will win people over and make them forget all about that astronomical annual payment. Let's see who fancied this 1930s gem as we go to auction. Right, next flat, Streatham Hill, SW2, I don't know, start 120, not going to go below 120. 120, sitting down, 120, 125. 125 with you, 130, 135, 140, 145, 146, new spot, 147, 148, 149, 150, 151, 152, 153, 154, 155, 156, 157, 158, 159, 
Oh, you got to. Looking for 159. Well done. 160. I'm going to go 161. 162. Looking for 163. You must do. Where? Oh, 163. Sorry. 163. 164. 165. 166. 167. 168. 169. 170. 171. 172. If not, it's 172 sitting down, first time, sec 173, 174, 175, 174 with you, first time, second time, third and last time, have you all done? So 174. The successful bid of 174,000 was made by Barbara. She divides her time between Italy, where she lives, and the UK, where some of her family are. She's no stranger to property and also no stranger to this programme. Barbara appeared on the show in 2010. Barbara, it's so lovely to meet you. I know we've seen you on the show before. Yes. So what's the story behind you buying this property? Well, it's the usual story. I mean, I just kind of look when I'm ready to buy again, and uh, this one cropped up. This was the last one on my list. So how long have you been buying and selling property? Hmm, 1988. Years of experience? Lots. So, Barbara, what were you doing prior to that? I was working for um, a top-end kitchen company and uh, met up with a friend who was actually buying property and letting to students. And so basically I thought, well, have a go. So that's what started it off. And I've had lots and lots of properties since. Wow. Go on, roughly how many? Well into the 30s, 40, okay. you know. But I mean, you know, I kind of have worked at the same time. So really it's always been a sort of uh, pastime, which I've thoroughly enjoyed because um, interior design is my profession, if you like. Um, so this w went very nicely uh, with that role in my life. So you really have got an eye for detail? Yes. So you obviously don't live in Streatham, you don't come yeah. from Streatham. Have you heavily researched this area and this block in particular? No, but my daughter, is in the business and she actually uh, sort of sourced this particular one and I trust her and um, she's rarely been wrong. So it's great stuff. You and your family have got the finger right on the pulse. So do you intend to sell or let this flat? This one I'm going to sell. Dimmi quando, quando, quando. I've no doubt Barbara and her team will do a sterling job here. But there's one thorny issue that does come with this flat, and that's the three grand a year service charge. It's quite high, very high in fact, and it may put the art, uh, might put some, someone off, I don't know. Uh, we'll see, anyway. It didn't put you off? But it didn't put me off, no. I think it'll sell reasonably well. The uh, position is good. Let's just fingers crossed. Let's not forget that service charge does include all the heating and hot water bills, so it's not all for maintenance of the building. There are some benefits, but what will Barbara do to set this flat apart from the others in the block? Obviously everything new, a uh, new kitchen, new bathroom. Details are important when you're, if you're wanting to sell sooner rather than later. The quality of one or two of the items, the kitchen, the, the layout. I don't like things done cheaply to look cheap at the end of the day. You can buy really well and tight on the budget, but you don't really want to make it look as if it's just a, the average refurb. So what sort of budget have you got in mind for this type of property? I told the builder, I, I, you know, I've got 10 grand to spend on this property. So that does really mean, you know, buying right. And uh, we've, we've managed it. We, everything's bought already. Barbara, how long is it going to take you and your professional guys to get in here and get out and get it on the market? Four or five weeks. Really? Yeah, you know, provided nothing goes wrong. As I say, I'm not quite sure. It's a fairly sort of solid block. I don't have to worry about exterior walls. You know, we're, we're two storeys up. Gable ends. You know, I've <laughs> been there, done that. Polar. 
And when she's not in the UK buying property, does Barbara live la dolce vita in Italy? We are doing, uh, building a couple of villas at the moment. Um, we just saw this wonderful piece of land uh, and he said, let's build a couple of villas. So, and that's what we're doing. But that yeah. wasn't enough. Oh, no, no, no. no you no, need no, a two-bedroom no, no. flash I do stratum. absolutely nothing in Italy, but I sit in the sunshine, you know, swim in the pool, and it's very nice. But, you know, you can get bored. You need yes, work to do, yes, don't you? Yes. I love it. It's fun. It's fun. Do your homework. You know, do it right. And, you know, after a few goes, it becomes, you know, pleasurable. Well, there you have it. Top tip from top property developer, oh, Barbara. Well. Good luck with this project. Thank you very so much. Nice to meet Fingers you. crossed. From Italian villas to a two-bedroom flat in Streatham Hill. Well, it seems Barbara can turn her hand to anything, big or small. But it's a time scale of four to six weeks. Is that realistic? And will she complete this for just £10,000? You can find out what happens later on in the programme. Coming up in Somerset, I meet the neighbours, the church, the goat. And one other thing, Yeovilton Royal Naval Air Station. In Streatham, southwest London, is it Arrivederci, Italy for Barbara? Mm. Big question mark now, but I'll keep you posted on that one. But first, it's back to Sunderland, where property students should take note. For an auction property, this one has worked very nicely for us, so we will be buying an auction again. We return now to Sunderland to see how David and Mark got on with their mid-terrace in Studentland. Outside, the four-bedroom mid-terrace was showing its age, and the rear yard was a dumping ground with a car space. Inside, the traditional layout remained, and there was tons of space. Two reception rooms, four bedrooms, and two bathrooms. Property investment managers Mark and David planned to renovate the house for the student market, but they still had a soft spot for a period property. What we're trying to do is hopefully um, you won't bring it back to the grandeur, but you'll bring it back to life. David and Mark paid £98,000 for the place and have a keen eye for a budget. They allocated £24,500 for everything, including fixtures and fittings. They planned to turn this large house around within four weeks with a crack team of builders. We've come back eight weeks later to see if Mark and David have reclaimed the house from neglect. Inside the house has been freshened up and that sad rear yard is now a usable space. The kitchen is unrecognisable. And the downstairs shower room now looks like somewhere you might actually want to get clean. They've turned a downstairs living room into a bedroom, so the four bedroom house has become a five bedroom house without sacrificing any original features. All of the features that were in the property when we came remain. We try to keep, wherever possible, the character of the building. We don't want to put false ceilings into a lovely old Victorian house. The ceilings in this house, as you'll see, are all beautiful, they're all original. Uh, that's the reason we've kept them. David and Mark are clearly developers with respect for the heritage of a building, but that needs to be combined with good commercial sense. Multiple occupancy lets like this one are subject to strict health and safety requirements. It's not quite as simple as it looks. Well, we've done quite a lot of work. We've uh, it's had a full rewire. It's had its fire alarm put into the, the property. It's had emergency lighting. It's had a new boiler. Yeah, all done to a very good standard. Yeah, we're say. very happy with it. Yeah, yeah, very happy. Upstairs, the four original bedrooms have all been rejuvenated with the same palette of colours and fabrics. I'm starting to see a pattern emerging. The, uh, the, the finish we've gone for in here is a standard finish. We, we have a number of student properties around the country, uh, and if you go into any of our properties, you'll see the same kitchen, the same uh, wallpaper on the walls, and the same furniture of the properties. But standardising the look of their properties does not mean standards drop for these developers. The bathrooms are a matte travertine tile. 
which is quite modern and chic. It'll let well and hopefully it'll sell well. And that readiness to let out or sell is key to how Mark and David's business operates. Once they've bought and refurbished a property, they sell it on tenanted and offer to manage it on behalf of the investor. We tend not to buy burned out shells or anything with subsidence or anything with major defects. We tend to buy kind of grandma's house, uh, which is what this was. It was just a tired old house. It was structurally sound. It needed some TLC, which is what we've done. Mark and David have certainly shown the love to this house and have managed to turn it from a four to a five bedroom property. Needless to say, they stayed bang on their refurbishment budget of 24500 So, since they bought it for 98000 their total outlay is £122,500. Time to find out what two local property experts think of their work. First impressions, um, yeah, I think it's a very well modernised and refurbished four to five bedroom terraced house. I think the kitchen's very well finished. Uh, and also there's a ground floor shower room as well as a first floor bathroom which I think is important. The whole feeling of the building uh, has changed completely. It's gone from what was quite a wreck to uh, a multi-let student home, or it could be a nice big family home as well. It's certainly what we call a triple M, a money-making machine. It's a, it's a great investment opportunity. High praise indeed. What do the estate agents think the place could sell for? Uh, resale value, um, current market, I would say round about £155,000. In, in terms of selling price now, uh, as, as a much improved property, um, easily the market value, we're talking 150, 160,000 pounds. Those valuations would give Mark and David a profit of between 27,500 and 37,500 pounds before cost and expenses. It's on the money. That's, uh, we were looking for 155 and uh, we've worked our figures on 155. We think we'll get a touch more than that based on the yield, but um, you know, d if someone offered that tomorrow, we'd say yes and, yep. and move on. Be yep. happy, happy with that. that. So the business model for their company is to sell their properties on tenanted and offer to manage them on behalf of the new owner investors. The estate agents estimated an income for the house as a five bedroom student let at between 1,400 and 1,600 pounds a month. That could mean a very impressive annual yield of around 15% on their investment. It's clear these guys know their market extremely well. We buy in areas uh, that are suitable for our tenants, which is in, within 20 minutes walk of a university. For an auction property, this one has worked very nicely for us, so we will be buying at auction again. I'm in one of the most beautiful counties in Britain, in a little village called Yeovilton in Somerset. There's not much here. There's not a pub, there isn't a shop. In fact, there's just a church and some pretty houses. Oh, and one other thing. Yeovilton Royal Naval Air Station, which means there is lots of air traffic and lots of noise. In the background noise comes the word of choice. In the distance of the world you want It's the one, it's the one I adore so not the standard kind of traffic noise that most buyers are used to. But with these lovely stone cottages, surely there's more than meets the ear. So I'm here to see a two-bedroom end of terraced house. This is it, looks fairly unassuming from the outside. Guide price, 195,000 quid. No, you heard right. 195,000, that's not 95,000. 195,000 for that? You've got to be kidding! This property does look a bit small from the outside, but as it's an end of terrace, there's certainly some potential to extend. And with a guide price of 195,000, that's the least you should expect. Well, I'll just ignore that price for the moment. What have we actually got? Well, through the door, downstairs loo there, and then through into the kitchen, which frankly is a bit disappointing. You expect a kind of cottagey feel for a little cottagey type place like this, but actually it's utilitarian, I suppose it does the job. Um, dining area over there, 
Um, so I suppose it's not a bad size space, but I'm not seeing anything that's deserving of the price so far. A property in need of some serious space enhancement, if ever I saw one. The living room is a bit on the small side. Heading upstairs, I find the bathroom. It's basic and feels pretty cramped. And two smallish bedrooms, all in need of refurbishment. Well, as I've already mentioned, the property backs directly onto the Royal Naval Air Station here in Yeovilton. What does that mean in practical terms? It means lots of noise from helicopters taking off and planes, whatever. In fact, the whole area has a Category D noise classification, which means basically unacceptable levels of noise. It also affects planning applications for any houses that might be built in the area. The good news is that it looks like the station is going to be reclassified as Category C lower levels of noise. That could have very interesting implications. Beautiful noise And it's a sound that I love And it fits me as well As a hand in a glove Yes it does Yes it does But it's out at the rear of the property here that things start to get really interesting from an investment point of view because the property comes with this bit of land. It's 0.6 acres. As you can see, it's fairly flat. It's got access onto the road there. It's got services from the house. Whoa, what is that? It's a building plot. Now, could you build on there? Well, it all comes down to the classification, the noise classification of the airbase. If the review drops that classification, then this suddenly becomes a very viable building plot. And look, I reckon you could get six, maybe seven houses on there. So suddenly, that £195,000 guide price seems a bit of a snip. So it's outside where this lot literally takes off. We asked a local estate agent for his view of the property. The land is a big selling point for this property because we've got a two-bed end terrace cottage. With the land, they can extend the property, a four-bed house on this, this site which will fit well with the land. What sort of price would this cottage fetch if extended and sold on? If they downgrade the noise bands um, and this property is extended with a two-bed extension, it should be worth in the region of £300,000. If you didn't uh, extend it and just renovated the cottage as it is, it would sell for probably in the region of £250,000. What about the rental market? If this property was renovated and extended um, and let out, it should achieve, with the paddock, about £750 a month. If you didn't extend it and renovate it as it is, it would let for approximately £500 per calendar month. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to eat my words because, you know what, this place could in fact be a great investment. Even if you didn't get planning permission to build houses on the land, just by extending the property itself, I think you could do very nicely, thank you. Let's see who fancied it when it went under the hammer. And we would go to lot number 10, two bedroom, end of terrace cottage with that wonderful garden. Our guide is 195,000 with someone out to put you straight in. Can't quite work out the hieroglyphics, 170. 170, thank you. 175, 180, 185, 190, 190, 190, 192, 195, 195, at 195,000, at 195,000 pounds. Congratulations, 195. Former estate agent turned property developer Nick has bought this place for its tremendous development potential. I caught up with him and his wife Janet at the cottage to discuss the options here. Nick, lovely to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me why you wanted to buy this place. I think the fact it's got a bit of land around it, which is unusual for a small cottage like this, uh, gives it uh, a lot of potential to extend and possibly potential beyond that, depending on uh, planning permissions. You obviously paid 195 you paid the guy a price. That's when, when I first heard that figure, I was like, what? It, it sounded a lot for, for, for the cottage, but presumably it's the land that's the key and put it at that price. Well, you're wrong. 
you hope I'm wrong. <laughs> what? Well, but, uh, but it's a lot. Was a lot. Yeah, I mean, most of the things at auction actually shot up over the guide price. That went for the guide price. I was very pleased to get it for what I paid for it. Mm-hmm. So I think it was fairly well priced. Without the land, what would this cottage have cost? Probably about 135000 Right. So it's about 60 grand for the land. Yeah. Nick plans to extend at the side of the property, creating a two-storey extension. That will give both greater living space downstairs and bigger bedrooms upstairs. Much needed, I'd say. Presumably all of that, of course, is subject to planning permission. And planning permission's been a bit of a sticky old wicket, hasn't it? I gather so, yes. I gather planning in this area is not the easiest due to the airbase at the uh, rear of this cottage. So that doesn't put you off? No, I don't think so. We're hoping there's going to be a reclassification of the uh, noise. It's Category D at the moment. Uh, the MOD wants to build, apparently, within the Oval Air Base, a new village for the servicemen so they can cycle to work. And uh, <laughs> hopefully that will result in uh, a declassification of the noise, which may change the planning potential for property in this area. The best case scenario is that you can put an extension on the side of here and in 2004, the previous owners put an application in for a terrace of four cottages to continue straight on down in line with these four cottages, which potentially could fit another two or three detached properties on. Wow, so you could have four terraces going that way, yeah, and then three detached properties on the paddock, well, bits of the paddock. That would be the best possible scenario, yes. And would you actually do that, or would you get that planning and then sell it on? I'd sell it on. Uh, with that planning? Yes, I'd do the extension to the house. Um, but I would sell that the planning. I'm not a builder. Not a builder, but a very shrewd businessman, it seems. That is, if he manages to pull this off. I'm Mr. Businessman. You tell me that you haven't got the time. Cause you believe the money makes a man. If you got planning permission for that, mm. best case scenario, do you have any idea what the land which you would then sell would be worth? Yes, I mean, it would depend on the time scale. But um, at current prices, you're probably talking a little shy of about a million pounds. But that's a scenario that is unlikely. A million? Yes. One zero zero comma zero zero zero. Wow. That would be including the cottage. Oh, right, OK. The cottage and the terrace and three plots on the front. But not doing any building, just selling it as it is? Only the extension. What kind of a budget does Nick estimate for this cottage? If the extension goes on the side, I'd reckon on spending probably up to £35,000 on doing that. But again, we've got to wait and see what size extension. This is a two-bedroom cottage. They might not want it overextended. Well, it's a fascinating story. Thank you very much for sharing it with us. And Pleasure. good luck. <laughs> I need it. Yep. <laughs> well, I can't remember a story I've done on the show which has such a range of potential outcomes, from Nick just breaking even to potentially making around three quarters of a million pounds worth of profit. Because it all comes down to reclassification in terms of noise levels and, of course, getting that all-important planning permission. You can find out what happens later in the show. Well, our property owners were certainly eager beavers when we left them. So did they grab the bull by the horns? Let's find out. We're back in Streatham, South London, to see how kitchen designer Barbara got on with a characterful 1930s flat in this mansion block. Splitting her time between Italy and the UK, Barbara has developed over 30 properties since the late 1980s. Inside, the two-bedroom flat had been unloved for a long time. There were some original features, but they were now buried under paintwork. There wasn't much of a kitchen to speak of, and the bathroom had been given the blue treatment with paint. Barbara has an eagle eye for detail and fully intended to bring it to bear on this property. You don't really want to make it look as if it's just a, the average refurb. Barbara paid 174000 for the flat and had set aside a budget of £10,000 to spend on refurbishing it. With her tried and trusted team of builders, she planned to turn it around in four to six weeks. 
We've come back just seven weeks later to see if Barbara's put the sparkle back into this classic London home. Life could be a dream If I could take you up in paradise up above If you would tell me I'm the only one that you love Life could be a dream, sweetheart The tired old flat has been completely rejuvenated. The sitting room is now comfortable and stylish. It has a fresh contemporary look which manages to incorporate the very best of the 1930s details that were originally here. The small cramped kitchen didn't look like it was ever going to be a fun place to spend time, but kitchen designer Barbara knew exactly how to fix it. Well, I have to say the kitchen was really awful. Um, I don't know how they used it before, right? But we managed to turn it around and make a very reasonable, sort of functional uh, kitchen. A dishwasher, washing machine, and all the, the appliances that you need, basically. Life could be a dream. Sweetheart, hello, hello again. Shaboom, hello, we'll meet again. Barbara makes it sound straightforward, but it's quite a feat bringing such a forlorn flat back to life. Pretty awful. It was seriously neglected. Um, I think nothing had been done for 30 years plus. We tried to keep the doors, the originals, and there's only one that we, in desperation we had to get rid of, and so that we've got the original features wherever possible, including the fireplace. Well, it was a matter of do we paint the hardboard white or do we just have a look, see what's behind it? And we had a look and we found the oak surround fireplace. One place she was not keen to retain the original features was the blue painted bathroom. Uh, the bathroom was equally as bad as the kitchen. Uh, but as you can see, we've managed to make a very, very decent job. Top to bottom travertino, which is rather nice in a bathroom. Some one or two interesting features, and uh, here we are. But not everything went Barbara's way. The flat is on a very busy road and would really have benefited from double glazing. The windows, we did apply to change them for double glazing, but apparently it's a conservation area, so therefore, we can't actually change them. You can, we can do the sort of some sort of uh, double glazing on the inside. It's nice that it's in, in a conservation area, but the minus is that you have to kind of leave the windows. So the windows are one original feature Barbara would have liked to change. Perhaps that meant she saved some of her original ten thousand pounds budget. We just got a, f a little bit carried away, so we actually reached eleven three in the end. Um, searching, cherry picking for bargains, basically, and uh, and we we got there. Barbara bought the flat for one hundred and seventy four thousand and spent eleven thousand three hundred pounds on the refurbishment, bringing her total outlay to one hundred and eighty five thousand three hundred pounds. Now it's time to find out what two local property experts think of her work. I think it's been uh, extremely well refurbished. Quality of the finish is good. Uh, I notice there, is, there are uh, natural stone uh, tiles in the bathroom which look really nice. And uh, all the surfaces and stainless steel looks really good. I'm really impressed. Sometimes with you know, something that's been newly refurbished, um, you, can see, uh, you can see some issues with it. Um, here it's been well done. A nice mixture of contemporary finish with some, uh, with some good um, period and character features. What could the property be sold on for? I would recommend uh, putting this on the market for uh, £245,000. To put it on the market today, I'd put it on between £235,000 to £240,000. Those valuations would give Barbara a profit of between £49,700 and £59,700 before costs and expenses. Very good. Gosh. Um... I mean, that's excellent, really. I'm very pleased with that, yeah. I, I wasn't quite imagining that, but you have to sort of look at the worst case scenario when you're doing this work, and uh, that's pretty good. I'm pleased with that.
When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. When she bought the flat initially, Barbara was very clear she had plans to sell it on. But has the Italian-based developer discovered a new love? We quite like it. It's a piera terra. We've been here a couple of weeks now. And really that was just to sort of put a little bit of furniture around, make it feel a little bit more sort of comfortable. Uh, but we've had some time we thought we'd spend in London for a change. So, um, mm, big question mark now, but I'll keep you posted on that one. We're back in Yeovilton, Somerset to see how retired estate agent Nick got on with that end terrace. It looks as though it's on a movie set. A war movie set. When the neighbours include one of the busiest military airfields in the UK, this property seemed very pricey at 195000 But it did come with just over half an acre of land. Nick saw the potential in all that land that came with the property. He thought the house needed a two-storey extension to make it a livable family home. As a retired estate agent, his knowledge of the market came in very handy. Do you have any idea what the land which you would then sell would be worth? Yes, I mean, it would depend on the time scale. But um, at current prices, you're probably talking a little shy of about a million pounds. A million? Yes. One zero zero comma zero zero zero. zero. Wow. That will be including the cottage. Nick paid £195,000 for the house and straight away applied for planning permission to add the two-storey extension. He had set aside a budget of £35,000 to build the addition and thought it would take him around four months. Well, we've come back just over 18 months later to see if Nick has doubled the size of his cottage and does he have a field of property or goats? He got the planning permission for the house extension. This is now a substantial family home. Come back home, back on your own now. Well, tried to keep everything in keeping. So the original cottage was in a local stone called Blue Lias. So the extension is in Blue Lias. It's a very hard natural stone and uh, very much in keeping with the rest of the cottages here. And then we've had natural stone which is a different kind of natural stone to go around the pathway and the parking area. And we've incorporated some very old historical flagstones in the pathway going around the house, again, because it's uh, an old, ancient part of the history of the house. Inside, Nick has kept the original layout and most of the old part of the house. The kitchen has been spruced up with new work surfaces. Since you last visited the property, the extension is, of course, the main addition. Uh, but the whole house has been redecorated, it's all being carpeted, final flooring, so there won't be a surface which is as it was. It's taken me far longer than I would have liked, um, 18 months, but planning permissions, building, it just uh, seems to drag on sometimes, but we're there now. Well, this is the new extension, it's probably my favourite room in the house now. Windows on two sides and some lovely patio doors overlooking the garden and countryside beyond. It's light, bright, very airy. And I think without much doubt, the feature of the house. This huge living room takes up all of the downstairs in the new extension. Upstairs, Nick has added two further bedrooms. One good-sized double with built-in storage and one double with an ensuite. But he had to add a small corridor to link the four bedrooms upstairs, so the two original bedrooms are now a little smaller. And he has not added a central heating system to the house. What I've done is put in some electric radiators in the bedrooms and some fan blowers in the bathrooms for instant heat for the simple reason that somebody who buys it may well want to go for an oil-based system or an LPG central heating system. 
Nick bought the place for 195,000 and completed the renovation work for 45,000, which was 10,000 pounds more than his original estimate. So his total outlay was 240,000. Time to find out what two local property experts think of his work. Very nice. He's done a very good job. Uh, turned it from a two-bed small cottage into a four-bed house, really. Yeah, very nice. Done a very good job. Should sell very well. My first impressions are that the property has been... Uh has benefited significantly from the large extension to the side. Uh, however, I do feel that it that has compromised the bedroom sizes significantly. What I would have done differently is uh, perhaps only have three bedrooms rather than the four. I think having the four bedrooms in the property has led to a compromise in the bedroom sizes and made them perhaps a slightly tight. Not a resoundingly positive reaction from one of the experts. What do they think the house is now worth? I would estimate the value of this property to be between £255,000 and £265,000. You could sell this property on for £275,000. Those valuations would give Nick a profit on the house alone of between £15,000 and £35,000 before costs and expenses. I think those figures are pretty much spot on. That's what I had in mind. But the big opportunity with this property lies in the land. Even as a paddock, you could expect to sell it for around £20,000. Now that Yeovilton has been reclassified to allow new building development, that paddock could quickly become a building plot with planning permission, and its value will change dramatically. As a building plot for four uh, developments, I would estimate the value to be between £300 and £340,000. I would think those figures are about right. 340,000 with four houses would probably be a, fig a good figure to get for it, I think. Nick hasn't applied for planning permission yet, but knows what his dream development would be. Well, I think it'd be very nice to be able to build four cottages on the back of the paddock. It would be good for the village, I think, and it would give young people something to buy in a village environment where they're normally excluded. Does former estate agent Nick think he's likely to buy under the hammer again? I think one of the things I particularly like about auction is that it's binding. You know where you stand there and then you know if you've bought it or if you haven't. And that's a nice position to be in rather than by private treaty where you can be buying it for two months and then suddenly find it's been withdrawn. From perfect homes to shrewd investments. Yes, join us next time for more auction action on Homes Under the Hammer. See you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.